Hi, this is David Thornburg, President and CEO of the Committee of 70, coming to you in front of the Volkswagen as a reminder that uh, election day is approaching and uh, a lot of important work still to be done to make sure that your votes count, your votes counts, and that the uh, election is safe and secure. So joining me today, as she has before, is uh, Chair of the City Commissioners, Lisa Dealey. Lisa, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, you're looking like you're hanging in there. I know you've uh, spent a few long hours and long days and a few more to come, but you look good. <laughs> oh, thanks. I feel like my bags have bags, but you know, we're almost uh, there. So f first question I have, and I appreciate that you can uh, make some time to join us uh, today, but you know, you've been on the front lines, you've been setting up at the convention center, you've been monitoring these uh, opening of these um, uh, drop boxes and satellite uh, officers offices out there. What, what's it look like? Are you, are you feeling good? I do. I feel really good. I, and I'm really uh, excited about how Philadelphians have really embraced all these different options we have uh, with regard to the mail-in balloting. So uh, the satellite offices were a, were a big success. And now uh, we just want Philadelphians that have their ballots, that receive them in the mail, and they're sitting on their kitchen table or sitting on the refrigerator. Or if you're like me, they're, it's in your car visor, because that's where I keep all important papers. Um, we want to make sure you get that back to us, whether it's in one of our purpose-built drop boxes uh, that we've deployed around the city, or a satellite election office, or um, even in days to come when we're out uh, at the mobile drop sites. It's really important. You already you did the work, you filled out the application, you got your ballot, you just have to finish it up and get that ballot back to us. Yeah, and uh, I think you agree with me, it's really too late to trust this to the post office, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. If you have not gotten your ballot back to us yet and you still have it, do not put it in the mailbox. We wanna make sure you, we get your ballot on time. I wanna make sure I throw some, throw some shade on Pat Christmas, our policy director, who apparently has his uh, mail ballot sitting on his kitchen table and hasn't found a way to get it uh, off to a drop box yet. So we're all gonna, we're gonna count on you. I didn't realize you had yours in your visor, but um, yeah. come on now. Mine's in now, I, I put all important papers in my visor, but I did take the ballot out and I did deliver it safely. And okay. call Pat, set an example. I know, we gotta, we, I gotta talk to him. So, <laughs> So I did see, it looks like the numbers I saw today said about 66, so maybe two thirds of the ballots, the mail ballots uh, that have gone out have been returned in, in Philadelphia. That's pretty good. But I look across, I know there was a little rivalry with Allegheny County, the second largest county, and I think they're about 75%. So here, here's what I'd ask you. What, you you're, uh, uh, you're born and raised in Philadelphia. You know Philadelphia about as well as anybody. What's the most Philly thing you could say to voters now to encourage them uh, to get those ballots uh, in? Well, first of all, we don't want to get beat on the ballots by, in Steeler country. I mean, that's for, for number one. So come on. I mean, we have to show them who Philly is. We can't let them beat us on the ballots. Get all right, well. In. You know, I, uh, I'm born and raised in Pittsburgh and I'm still a Steeler fan, so, but I'll let you slide on that one. <laughs> I care yes. about my adopter. Yeah. Yeah. I know I have um, a colleague who's from Pittsburgh also. So I, I know that, I know yeah. that, I know that, but we're all in for Philly right now. <laughs> what do you hear from voters about how they've, uh, you mentioned a little bit earlier about how they've, um, adapted to or, or taken advantage of these new options they have? Are people anxious? Are they, are they confident? Do they, uh, are, do they welcome the changes or what do you hear? I think that uh, all, overall, uh, everybody's a little anxious about this election uh, just because of all the rhetoric that's out there. Um, there's a pandemic. You know, this is a new way of, for a lot of voters they, who maybe didn't do it in June, it's a new way for people to, to get their vote in in Philly. So I think there, and it's such an important election. Uh, I think there's a lot of anxiety. And, you know, as, as any time when you're introducing something new, uh, there's just that additional anxiety. Uh, but we're, we're seeing uh, great participation. You know, we had 
uh, we had some days where we had pretty long lines at our satellite election offices. Um, and we've all gone out and visited with them and we walked the lines and talked to voters and everybody was pretty upbeat uh, and, you know, happy to be there, happy for the option uh, to, to go on their time uh, when they carve time out of their day to go there and to vote. It's a little different than, you know, waiting until Tuesday and there's a long line. People are, uh, you know, sometimes they don't have a lot of time there and, you know, we don't see that same kind of mood. Uh, on election day when people have to sometimes wait in line. Uh, and but for voters that want to vote in person, you know, absolutely we're going to have that option uh, back in its original or what, what people are used to historic form with 1,703 divisions all standing up on their own. But folks should know they are going to have to wait in a line uh, even if there aren't that many people voting uh, because of the need to social distance. Um, so. If you're planning on voting in person, we want to make sure you're dressed properly. If you might have to stand outside, uh, we don't know what the weather will be. Um, and, but just pack your patience and be nice to your election board workers because they're your neighbors. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the mechanics of getting ready for the uh, that in-person election, which in a normal year, would that would have been the whole... Enough. That would have been <laughs> enough, yeah. But where do things stand in terms of poll workers, PPE, any issues with polling locations? Where do we stand there? Listen, with, with your help, uh, 70s help and the help of other organizations, we have never seen the number of people that have uh, stepped up to help us with regard to poll workers, election board workers. We've had an incredible response uh, for the call for election board workers. And we're there. I mean, uh, we have uh, confirmed enough spots for our, for it to stand up those 1,703 uh, precincts divisions, um, and we're going to have uh, you know plenty of people in the corral ready to go out in case somebody decides after all they don't want to do it or they can't make it or you know things happen. I mean we know in every election, uh, you know it happens. People get up in the morning and maybe they have you know they their babysitter doesn't come or they get called into work, you know, things happen, but we'll have people at the ready um, to make sure that all the, all of our polling places are, are fully staffed on election day. The uh, most anxious time for you is I suppose maybe between six and eight on election day as all those uh, last minute uh, changes are ironed out, huh? Yeah. So um, I, I start out at four in the morning on election day, because that's the earliest time before the phone starts, my cell phone starts to ring. Yeah. Um, I found out in my first uh, election as commissioner, you know, it, the early morning is the worst. So you, I have to start my day a little earlier so that I can uh, take all the calls. Yeah. You know, you're, uh, you've got this Rovers program in place, I think, for the first time. Is this, this is a new thing? But yeah, so we have a rover program, and it really what it is, it's, it's our way to have just additional eyes and ears on the ground. Uh, and especially now that we need to have the PPE uh, and the social distancing, we have uh, somebody out there that can help um, to make sure that uh, if there's if people run out of supplies, we can get them, uh, you know, to them quickly. If there's an issue, uh, it gets back to us uh, in real time. Uh, we just want to be prepared. Uh, for whatever we need to do, you know, it's a big city. Uh, and as a Philadelphia, as an elected official citywide, you really have a real understanding of just how big the city is. So we want to make sure um, that we can get to every neighborhood as quickly as possible to give them whatever they need on election day. Yeah. I'm going to throw out you a question I know you've heard before from lots and lots of reporters. I'd just be interested in how you respond to it, which is, you know, there's a lot of swirling anxiety about uh, people's conduct at the polls uh, on election day, potential intimidation, violence, illegal poll watchers, you know, your sort of mind spins at all the possibilities. Uh, but how should voters look at that um, experience and, and the, those possibilities? And what you are know, they, by the way, if they, if they feel like there's something going on? Well, you know, uh, District Attorney Larry Krasner, uh, he had a press event uh, about a week ago where he uh, already uh, amped up his election day task force uh, because we had uh, the satellite election offices open. And um, he's a great partner in the district attorney's offices that has historically partnered uh, with 
the city commissioner's office just for those reasons. So um, voters should know uh, that everybody, all of us here in, in Philadelphia government wanna make sure that your vote is cast freely and fairly. And if you have any issues on election day, um, you should just call us, call the district attorney's office, call 70. Um, we, we are gonna get somebody out there and we're gonna make sure um, that those things don't happen in Philadelphia. Yeah. They the, won't be tolerated. The, the, the first line of, uh, if you're concerned, I, 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 th I think this is right, that the first line of defense is the judge of elections, right? If you've got yes. some concern. Well, that's for inside inside the polling place. So, so things that are occurring inside the polling place, uh, the first line of defense is the judge of elections and the right. ju every judge of elections will be equipped with a cell phone uh, so they can call us uh, immediately or they can let the rover know, uh, whatever the case we, we're gonna, that's, uh, we have additional people out on the street all day on election day, along with the district attorney. Uh, and we're going to keep a close eye on the climate. So one other issue, and then I, I know you got stuff to do, so I won't keep you too long, but uh, you had raised, uh, oh, it seems like a million years ago, but probably late summer, uh, raised the alarm about the uh, issue of uh, uh, the, the extending the time uh, where we would accept mail ballots, uh, suggesting that if we didn't do that, we might be jeopardizing, I don't know, tens of thousands. I think you even said 100,000 ballots that would come in too late because of the compressed window between the time you can apply for a ballot and the time it has to be in. Yeah. I mean, those, those deadlines, you know, they've never been really fair. They've been, uh, as you know, historically, and even when we were only dealing with uh, absentee ballots in, in a much smaller number, uh, the deadline versus the time we have to receive it is really unrealistic. Uh, years ago, uh, mail was handled differently. You know, now it's handled regionally, so it takes longer. It's it's not mail does not typically travel in a day, um, or even two days, and you know, people need to realize that. Like the and that those dates. Uh, along with a couple other things that need to be updated uh, in the Pennsylvania election code. You know, we did a lot of a lot of work on it with Act 77, but there's a lot of work that needs to be done and needs to be done quickly because a lot of this, a lot of the things that we didn't fix really um, are brought to light with Act 77. And one of them is the uh, the deadlines. Yeah. You know, it's one thing that first of all, they were never, they never really made sense to me. But now that you have so many people uh, voting by mail, you really need to be cognizant of the fact that mail takes longer, and uh, you know it's it's not it's not a it's it's just not rational for people to think that they can apply on. We're, they're doing what we're telling them they can do. They can apply on the deadline, and this is the day, last day, and get it back. But it it isn't rational, so uh, we need to work on that. But you know, I think we said this at the outset. The, the the clear advice at this point is, if you're holding a mail ballot, find a drop box, find a satellite office, bring it to city hall. Don't trust it to the mails, and uh, and uh, you know that's the easiest way to ensure. Yeah, and we're all over. I mean, we've we you know we've done a, a pretty uh, fair job of making sure that there is either a satellite election office or a purpose built drop box in practically every neighborhood of the city um, or close enough for people to get there uh, reasonably. Uh, we wanna make sure that you get that ballot back. Yeah. And you know, as you know, we'll be announcing uh, today or tomorrow uh, some additional opportunities for uh, voters to get their uh, ballots to us through mobile drop-offs. Good. Can you announce those locations or does that uh, have to go through official channels still? We can as soon as they're all, um, the I's dotted and the T's crossed. We'll get them announced as soon as possible. But that should be in place by the weekend. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Okay, good. Well, I'll let you go. Uh, thank you, Commissioner, uh, for your good work, and I'm sure we'll be talking. Uh, this again is David <laughs> Thornburg from the Committee of 70, and uh, I'm sure the Commissioner joins me in encouraging you one way or the other to make sure your vote gets in uh, by absolutely. 8 o'clock November 3rd. Thank you so much. Thank you, David. <laughs>